Hello and welcome to another Tech It tutorial brought to you by Captain Jack of the Minecrafters. In this video, I am going to go over the changes to nuclear power in Industrial Craft 2 that's used in the new Tech It Lite mod pack. I'll try to give a brief overview of each component of the nuclear reactors and how to make a good, safe, and efficient setup. Um, I'm by no means an expert on the Tech It Lite nuclear power, but I couldn't find any other good video tutorials about it so I'll do my best with what I've learned so far first of all what has changed um, there are a few important things you must keep in mind right off the bat um, you can no longer cool reactors with water buckets or ice um, you can no longer cool reactors from an exterior source such as water um, just does not work the thermal monitor which is this thing right here that has a number 10 on it will track the current heat of the reactor but will not properly shut the reactor off. Um, this is because in previous versions of industrial, industrial craft as soon as you placed a uranium cell into the reactor it would start right up and now the reactor must be supplied with a redstone signal in order to operate. Um, the way thermal monitors work is they send a redstone signal to the reactor to try and shut it off once it gets too hot when it gets too hot this green number 10 will turn red and you can actually set the temperature up or down um, to the degree that you want it to shut off your reactor at um, but since it needs the reactor needs a redstone signal to start up this thermal monitor sending another signal to it just does no good it won't shut it off um, and what we actually need to do to work around that is make a logic circuit to get that to work and we'll need Ingram's help to do that in a later video so I'm not going to go over that. Um, one of the things that hasn't changed though is the way you set up the physical reactor. Um, as you can see it's set up the same way. You'll have one reactor and six reactor chambers on each side of the reactor. So we have six here, two on top, four on the side. Um, you'll need again six reactor chambers each on one side of the reactor itself and the more chambers that you attach the more space inside your reactor you're going to have. Uh, I'm not going to show that here but um, the ideal setup is six chambers. It'll give you the most um, customization options for your reactor. One of the major problems of nuclear engineering is to balance efficiency against the problems of extra the extra heat it generates. Um, I'm playing on a TechIt server um, with the rest of the Minecrafters and I want a safe setup that generates a good amount of power while still not risking a meltdown. My goal is to develop a reactor setup that will power a mass fabricator and still be able to gather excess gen energy to fill an MFSU. Um, here are some of the items at our disposal right now and a brief description of what each one does. I'm going to go through these one by one first thing that's changed is uranium. As you can see we have a single cell uranium, we have a dual cell and a quad cell uranium. Um, there's a lot of important things, there's a lot of technical stuff to this and uh, I'm gonna kinda skim over the really technical stuff and just try to give you the basics of what you need to know. Placing two single uranium cells side by side inside a reactor is going to generate a lot more benefit than if you were to place two of them in two separate areas. This is because a single uranium cell will generate 5 EU per reactor tick, but if you place them side by side what you're going to get is um, double the output because for each uranium cell that it's next to it's going to generate an additional 5. So two single cell uraniums or two single sticks of uranium inside a reactor right next to each other are going to generate 20 EU per tick instead of just 10, five coming from each one individually. Um, the only problem with this, um, putting sticks of uranium next to each other, is that it's going to generate a lot more heat. And so you have to make sure that you have the proper cooling methods to keep it cooled down. Um, the dual uranium cell is simply two single sticks next to each other but in a single box. So basically this dual uranium cell is just like two single cells next to each other in a reactor. So this dual cell is going to generate 20 EU per tick. And same thing goes for the quad uranium cell. This is going to generate 
60 EU per tick. But with the increased output of power in a minimal amount of space, you're going to get problems with heat. And again, you're going to want to make sure that this is all cooled properly. Um, just to clarify really quickly, what the reactor does is it sends these things called ticks. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly. I forget how many ticks goes through one cycle. Um, but each of the com components inside, which if you really want to dive into the subject, will take far longer to explain. Let's get rid of this rain. Um, each component has a tick. It ticks the uranium core itself. Um, and that determines how much heat is generated and how much of how much per each component is cooled. Um, you're going to have to look up that yourself if you want to know more about how the reactor ticks itself. Um, <clears throat> so how can you keep the reactor cool enough not to melt your base off of the face of the earth? Um, we have all these nice little things to keep the reactor cool. Um, they're fairly straightforward. The 10K coolant cell provides 10,000 units of cooling. The 30K and the 60K, likewise, 30,000 and 60,000 units of cooling. There is something that you can make called an RSH condensator, which will take care of 20 um, coolant points. And then the most powerful of all by far is the LZH condensator. Now, that thing is impossible to make um, unless you are extremely high tech. It requires at least two RSH condensators and some other things down the line. It's really hard to make. For this video, we're not going to use them. We're going to use 60K coolant cells just to demonstrate the basics. Um, so again, this one will create 10K, 30K, 60K, and then we have the RSH condenser and LZH, which generate 20K and 100K points of cooling each. Now we have something called reactor plating, which is another um, component that you can add inside your reactor. You have plain reactor plating, containment reactor plating, and heat capacity reactor plating. The reactor plating, the plain one up top here, will increase your reactor's maximum temperature by 1,000 and reduce its explosion rain range by 5%. The containment reactor plating will increase your reactor's maximum temperature by only 500 but will reduce the explosion size by 10%. Um, and finally, the Heat capacity reactor plating will increase your reactor's maximum temperature by 1700, which is the most of all three, but will dis only decrease its explosive range by 1%. So if you're very um, unsure of your design and you think it's going to blow up, throw some of these babies in there and hopefully it'll keep you from overheating too quickly. Here's the next set of things that you can throw inside of your reactor. We have vents, all kinds of vents, heat vents, reactor heat vents, advanced heat vents, overclocked heat vents, component heat vents. Um, what these vents do is basically push heat out of your reactor and into the environment. Um, this was not something that you had to worry about um, in industrial craft or the original industrial craft. Um, but these are used and are extremely important in keeping your reactor cool, getting rid of that heat, and keeping you running at a lower temperature. Um, the heat vent will reduce um, your reactors, or will get rid of six basically heat points. Um, the reactor vent here will take away five heat points and another five from the reactor. So it's important to note here that the reactor is holding temperature which is increased by these platings over here. And also, the physical temperature inside your setup is holding heat as well. So this reactor heat vent is going to take away five points from your reactor core and another five from your setup there. The advanced heat vent is going to get rid of 12 heat. The overclocked heat vent is going to get rid of 20 heat plus 36 from the reactor. And the component heat vent um, is going to take away four heat from each of the com components surrounding it. And these white arrows on the outside edge help make that a little bit more clear. So heat vents are what gets the heat out of your reactor. Again, extremely important. You need these. The last of uh, this mess of nuclear components here are heat exchangers. Um, they all do different things. We'll go over them real quick. The regular or plain heat exchanger 
will transfer 12 heat from any um, unit touching it out, or, or will, will, I'm sorry, will move 12 heat to the next component, and it will transfer four of those heat points to the core of your reactor. The advanced heat exchanger will transfer 24 points of heat to the next, um, to the adjacent um, item, and will also transfer transfer eight to the core. The core heat exchanger or reactor heat exchanger basically takes 72 heat from anything next to it and throws it right into your reactor core. Um, so if you have a lot of plating, you can go ahead and use this and dump tons and tons of heat right into the core. And finally, the component heat exchanger will transfer 24 heat only to anything in an adjacent block. So this is what we have here. Basically, we have exchangers, which move heat around. We have vents, which get rid of heat. We have plating, which increase the amount of heat your reactor can take. We have cooling, which is the basic, um, well, it's you need it to cool your reactor down. You need these. Um, you have to have them. And we have the different types of uranium cells. Now, over here, I have three reactor setups. Um, they each have a thermal monitor on them. This one is loaded with quad uranium cells and 60K coolant cells. Now, this reactor will run just fine. The problem is none of the coolant cells inside will regenerate once they wear out, leaving this reactor subject to a meltdown if you do not watch it extremely closely. What I have here is basically 4X insulated cable attached to an MFSU. And this is the whole reason we make nuclear reactors, isn't it? Is to get power. So what happens when I turn this on? This is straight 4X HV cable going into an MFSU. That happens. Another change in IC2 is that if you have up to, up, um, to quad uranium cells, it regenerates too much power to pump directly into an MFSU. So what you need is you need an HV transformer. That's what this is right here. We have a reactor setup going into an HV transformer into an MFSU. That will allow it to safely transfer power into wherever you want to store it. This reactor setup, basically the same ex exact reactor setup, this one with dual uranium cells, is again, it's a very safe reactor, except you have to watch it. So I'm going to turn this on, and as you can see, a redstone signal applied with red power to the reactor itself will turn it on. And you can see that the uranium cells are gaining heat and the coolant cells are also losing heat, as you can tell by the ticks over there on the right side. This is going to fill up your MFSU, not extremely fast, but it's going to provide some safe energy for you. This setup with dual uranium cells, we have eight of them surrounded by coolant cells, will not power a mass fabricator and fill up your MFSU, which is what I really want to create on my Tech at Light server that I'm playing on. So this is what we have here. Basically, all these components, we have tons of new things. We have coolant cells, we have reactor plating, we have vents, and we have heat exchangers. Now, how in the world do you use all these things together? And how do you make something that's safe, yet outputs a really good amount of power? This reactor here is one that I set up, um, and it's hopefully a really good demonstration of how each of the components work and how you can design your own nuclear reactor um, to get what you want out of it, either maximum efficiency with zero safety or maximum safety with fairly low efficiency. So we're going to take a look at this one. Now inside we have all kinds of things. Basically we have four quad uranium cells in one single line. We have 60K coolant cells. We have component heat exchangers. We have advanced heat exchangers. And we have overclocked heat vents. And as you can see, every component inside this reactor is being utilized in some way. This reactor will automatically cool down the coolant cells, which will make them um, last a lot longer and that's because each of these coolant cells is connected to heat exchangers so for instance 
the heat that's generated from this quad uranium cell right here is going into this one and this one. And then this component heat exchanger is taking it and throwing it to this component heat exchanger, this advanced heat exchanger, and it's dumping it out this heat vent right here. So essentially, as you can see from the flip flickering green bars, this is a very safe reactor and it's going to cool itself down if you shut it off for a while. So let's turn it on. As you can see, it's maintaining less than 10 heat in the core, so it's extremely safe. And here it is, all powered up, and as you can see, the coolant cells are slowly decaying, and the heat exchangers are sending the heat to the proper places, and the entire thing is being utilized 100%. Now one precaution I would definitely make is if you're worried about um, taking out your friend's base or blowing a hole in your server, take the time out to make a nice little wall of reinforced stone. Now what this is right here is a nuclear meltdown with a nuclear reactor that used to be right here. I did this after I made this whole tutorial because I was confident that it would be 100% protected and I did knock out this block by accident before so that did not get damaged. Um, this is what happens when your reactor melts down. It creates a lot of havoc, devastation, and so you're going to want to have a three thick wall of reinforced stone um, protecting anything that you want protected. Um, on my server I'm going to make my nuclear reactor above my base. So what will happen essentially is I'll have a three thick platform of reinforced stone and I'll have my reactor on top of it. So if it does explode and it does melt down and I don't know what I'm doing, the explosion is going to go entirely upwards and not touch anything in my base. Um, I hope this tutorial helps. I hope it sheds a little bit of light on how to set up brand new IC2 nuclear power. Um, again, I didn't see other tutorials out there, so I hope this one really helps. If you want me to build something else, if you want to know more, please leave us a message. Um, we are the Minecrafters, and our website is theminecrafters.com. Please rate this video, subscribe, and leave a comment if you want to see a little bit more. Thank you, and goodbye.